Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about how you can update the PNP version of the He-Wing Ranger T1 VTOL. Now I looked at it a while ago and it came with its own flight controller and this was developed before He-Wing started to work closely with the Ardu pilot development team. That started back at the beginning of 2023 and I was part of making that happen and now they're part of that development team which makes things a lot easier. But what's that left us with is a little bit of a legacy because this original PNP version that was shipped will actually identify itself to Mission Planner as an incorrect thing. It'll actually say that it's a Matek F405TE, where in fact it's nothing like that at all. And that means that if you then go to update it to the latest version of Ardu Pilot, Mission Planner is going to be incredibly complicated and potentially you're going to flash the wrong firmware to it and all heck is going to break loose. Luckily, there is a way around it. The Ardu Pilot development team have been working with HeWing and it is now fully supported, but also the new version of the flight controller, the V2, that will be in future things is also supported too. But there is a little bit of extra work that you have to do in order to get the flight controller in the PMP updated to real Ardu Pilot. Now I need to say a massive thank you to this gentleman. This is a gentleman called Andy. He's one of the developers that has figured all of this out. And I started talking to him back in February 2023 in order to do a little video about optimizing the tuning for the Hewing Ranger T1. And it took us six months of messing around, fixing code, iterative testing, a couple of destroyed models to get to the end where the tune is pretty good. And I want to put the new tune onto my PMP version and fly it. But to do that, I have to go through this extra process. So a massive thank you to Andy. I'll put a link down to his YouTube channel. He has his own and he's posting things about this kind of stuff all the time. So if this is an area of interest and floats your boat, then definitely go make sure you subscribe to his channel. So let me very quickly go through the process that I'm about to show you on the bench. The first thing I'd recommend you do before you go through any of the things by the side here is to go and check what the outputs look like because they will almost certainly change uh, because in the tuning that Andy's doing, he's optimizing the outputs because the outputs are grouped in terms of their timers. I'm not going to get into the technical detail, but it basically optimizes the way that the flight controller is going to work. That means that the servos, the ESCs may be plugged into different places. So take a look at how it is set up now. And then when you finish the update, you can take a look and see what's changed. And then you can move the connectors around to suit. Second thing is I would also recommend that you save a full backup of the param file as it currently is before you do the update. I will keep a copy of mine here. In fact, you know what? I'll put a link down below in case you didn't do that when, you, when you've finished this whole process. Uh, but when you have those two things for reference, then you can start with this process. First thing you need to do is you need to load the transitional firmware onto the flight controller. You go to a very specific web address and the transitional firmware is at that location. You then just click and download it and I save it on somewhere like your desktop. I'll put a link down below so that you can go and get that. Second thing you're going to need is you're going to need to get hold of the parameter file, the tuned setup for this particular model. Again, big thank you to Andy for that. And I'll put a link down below to that as well so you can get those two files. Once you've got them, you need to flash the transitional firmware onto the flight controller using Mission Planner. Once that's on there, then you need to update the bootloader. When the bootloader has been updated, it will then identify itself correctly to Mission Planner, which will allow you to then continue. Once it's identifying itself correctly, then you can go through a standard firmware update, go through that process just like you would with any flight controller, because now you've essentially fixed the HeWing F405 flight controller that's in there. And when it's finished, then go into the full param tree in Mission Planner and then start uploading all of those new features and the tune from Andy, again, using that param file. Be aware, it might take several loads for all of the errors to go away and for you to get all of that goodness. If there are particular things that aren't turned on, that then by turning them on, give you access to another 20 settings. The first time you update the param file, it's going to turn that thing on, but then it's gonna error for everything else. But I would say if you do it two or three times, you should be fine. So with that process outlined, Again, this is just something you were only going to have to do once. It's only for the HeWing PMP with the first version of the F405 flight controller in it that they shipped. Once you've done it, then from there on, because it's now fully supported by RD Pilot, it gets an awful lot easier. So let's jump onto the bench now. We understand roughly what we're about to do, and I'll take you through the process. 
So let's go through and update this version one flight controller in this HeWing T1 P and P. Again, this only affects really this first version that's been shipping with the incorrect identifier. So I've plugged in a USB cable here. Let me plug that into the computer. And then here in the computer, let's click connect. Make sure we're on the right USB port. And it's going to get all the params from this. And if we go into messages, you'll see here that it's reporting itself as a Matek F405TE. This is patently not one of those. And that is exactly why there has been this issue because now RD Pilot is going to see it as that and try and flash it of that. And that obviously is not what the flight controller is. So I've downloaded a couple of files here on my computer. The first one, is this interim APJ file. This is the interim firmware that's going to allow us to flash the firmware. And then this is the tune from Andy that we're going to have to apply several times to get over all the errors. And then we can look at the outputs again. While we're connected, we need to have a look at a couple of things before we actually do the update. First thing we need to go is set up and have a look at the mandatory hardware and look at the servo output. This is what it currently looks like. This will very likely change once the firmware has been updated. And that's because the way the timers work, these outputs tend to be grouped in sets of four and the new firmware uh, kind of takes account of that for things like the uh, servos and ESCs and stuff. So we need to take a good long hard look at this, take a screenshot or take a shot of it with your mobile phone. The other thing we need to do then is go into config. We will go into full parameter tree and over here on the right hand side, we have the ability to save to file. So we're going to click save to file just to keep all the parameters somewhere nice and safe. And I'm just going to call it something like that and put them on the desktop. Now we've done those two things, we can disconnect and it's time to flash the flight controller with that interim firmware. So we're going to go into the setup tab and we're going to say install firmware and we're going to say load custom firmware, which is down here. And it's going to ask us where to get that from. We're going to pick the one that's on the desktop that we've downloaded. This is the transitional firmware. We're going to click open. And it's going to go through and it's going to do hopefully the whole thing without me having to touch anything. I'm not going to speed this up. This is exactly how long it's going to take so that when you do it on your computer, if there's a little pause or something, it doesn't freak you out. I know it definitely does here when I click go and nothing happens. There's no positive reporting. You kind of think, has that broken it? So that upload has been done it's going to reboot and come back. When it comes back, that interim firmware that's now on here is there just really so that we can now flash and update the bootloader. So I'm gonna click on bootloader update. Are you sure you want to upgrade the bootloader? This can break your board. Yes. Are you sure you want to upgrade? We're gonna say yes and it says upgraded bootloader. Now, we're not gonna reboot, we're not gonna turn this or power anything off because people have had issues at this point by trying to reboot it and the bootloader not being able to boot the old version of stuff that's still on there. So now the bootloader has been done, let's click on official, we'll say yes. It's come up and told me it's a HeWing F405. A HeWing F405 is exactly what it is. Uh, it is actually a he wing. It's detecting it properly now. So now I'm going to click on upload firmware. It's going to download that from the internet. And hopefully as it boots, it's going to connect. It's going to start erasing and it's going to then start once it's erased everything, copying over the file. And because we updated the bootloader is why it was seen as a HeWing F405, not a Matek one, which was the incorrect ID, which is the source of all the problems. So this is looking really good. Hopefully we're going to be able to reboot this once this is finished and we're going to be in a good place. Upload is done. That looks very promising. 
let's make sure the right com port is still con there it is we're going to click on connect let's see if we can connect to it now that's really promising isn't it let's go into the data look at the messages and there we are it's been reported as a he wing f405 which is this version in here the 405 v2 is the later version that has been developed with the Arduino pilot team Wow, okay, so that's the hard bit done. We go back into config and go back into the full parameter tree. What we can do is we can load from a file. Uh, the parameter file might have different extensions, there it is. So this is the T1 Ranger Hewing F405, so I'm gonna double click on that. We're gonna have lots of things that's changed. Everything that's green is changed. Okay, we're gonna say write params. We'll say okay. Parameter save successfully. So at this point, what I would probably do is reboot the flight controller so that we can do it again because things, some things in quad plane or the BD shot stuff or whatever may have changed. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna disconnect. I'm gonna unplug the flight controller and this will be the first time it does a hard boot with the new bootloader and the operating system. So this is a good test. I'm gonna plug that back in again. It's going to boot up and then back in Mission Planner, we'll make sure we have the right COM port selected and we'll click Connect. And hopefully, if this has all worked, we will still be able to talk to it. That's great, we still can. We'll again load the parameters from file. I think it's got a different extension. There it is, so we'll do it from that one. That will have, again, changed a few things. No errors. So we'll put right parameters, we'll say OK. Parameters successfully saved. And we're looking pretty good now, actually. This is looking pretty positive. So this should now be the new tune. If you get any errors, then just keep applying the param file until it goes super smooth. Now it has, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into setup, we're gonna go back into mandatory hardware, and we're gonna go back into server output and we will compare what this is to what it was before. And we will make a note of what has moved around, and if anything has, then we will move around the outputs, the connectors on here on the flight controller, and that is the last part of the update. You have successfully updated it. Now again, this is only needed because Hewing initially shipped this Hewing F405 flight controller with the incorrect identifier, which confuses Mission Planner. So if you have heard of issues with people flashing it, that is the piece that they've missed. But that interim firmware that updates the bootloader will sort that out for you. So there we have it. That is how I have just updated mine here. The big tip I will give you is use the links down below to get the files that you need. The other big tip I'll give you is that when you have updated the bootloader, I wouldn't then power cycle the flight controller while it's still running. I would then go and with the new bootloader there on the flight controller, go and immediately go to update it to RD Pilot. 4.4 whatever to get the Arduino plain version that you want. That means that then the bootloader and the real version of Arduino Pilot will be there. So when you do boot it, it's all gonna work flawlessly. Hopefully that helps some of you and it is a little bit complicated, a bit of a specialist video this one. But for those of you that have that first version of the He-Wing Ranger T1 VTOL PMP, this will get you out of that slightly sticky situation. Again, this only happened because He Wing were building this stuff without actually working with the Ardu Pilot developers. That has now been fixed and they're an official supporter of Ardu Pilot. So from here on in, we shouldn't ever have to do this again. But hopefully, for those of you that need to do it, you've now seen it done. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.